Hi, everyone. Just type a Y in the text chat if you can hear me. Yep, Christine, Melanie, Shirley, Suzanne. Yep, everyone can hear me. Awesome. Well, welcome to today's free webinar on clearing financial blockages, everyone. So how are you all feeling today? Hunky dory. <laughs> well, I'm not sure what that means, Suzanne, but um, yeah, it sounds funny there. And Christine, great. Thanks, William. That's great, Christine. Pretty cool and wonderful. Oh, that's great then, Suzanne. That's great. Melanie's feeling good, thanks. Huh, it's great to see everyone's feeling good. Okay, so now without further ado, let's jump into the uh, today's webinar. So clearing financial blockages, what are they? So money imprints and blockages. Now, what are money imprints? So money imprint, so which are basically imprints around business, investments, and finances, are blockages and attachments inherited from parents, ancestors, past lives, and your choices. So from the whole array of things there. And money imprints can be karmic as well. So for example, if you swindled someone in a past life, it would be an explanation of why you were swindled in this lifetime. And most people on the planet, of, I'm sure you'd all agree with me, have a lot of blocks and attachments around money. Because we are all heavily programmed around money. Just think about it in the Western world. Wealth is king. And that's what people think about. So we're very heavily programmed with money. From school, parents, getting a job, well-meaning relatives, peers, mass media, all of this affects our consciousness around money. So now just type in the text chat which of those in that, in that text you feel has affected your consciousness around money the most, out of school, parents, or job, or whatever. So just type in the text chat which one you feel has affected your consciousness. Melanie, Linda, parents, and John, parents, Shirley, business, Saatchi, school and parents. Yeah, so this is a, wow, Christine, parents. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, parents is very much the common theme here, which is not surprising because that's the most common way that people are affected around money, whether for the worse or for the best. Because, I mean, I'm sure you would have all heard, like, we can't afford it. Money doesn't grow on trees. You have to work hard to earn money. And just, um, those, just those kind of statements. And um, there's... Christine, yes. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And there's also the church... That, that, that says the money is the root of all evil, teachings, ancestors, and jobs, etc. Because, I mean, what, what I mean by that is that the church gets it completely wrong here. Because, I mean, the money isn't the root of all evil, nor having a lot of money. The lust, when the lust of money is the root of all evil. Because who would agree that money is a big reason that the planet is in such a mess? and why people's lives are being destroyed and all that kind of stuff. Just type a Y if so. Margaret, yep. Saatchi, yep. Shirley, yes. Yep, so yeah, quite a few of you. And Linda. Yeah, so everyone's agreeing here. Because, I mean, the, it's like lust versus love. I mean, lust is simply, lust means insatiable desire. It will never be enough. You're just filling in a cup with an empty bottom. So it's never going to be enough. And it's more self-serving. Whereas love, love goes beyond, love goes beyond yourself. It, it comes to serving other people and serving the planet and making sure that they're taken care of as well as you are. 
So I mean, when you when you're in love, I mean that the that you'll not only get the satisfaction and meaning in your life, but you also have a lot of money. Whereas when you just do it for self-serving, you're sure you'll have a lot of money, but you will lack substance and a real meaning in your life. So that's what it simply means that money, the lust of money is the root of all evil because all the great men and women of God were very wealthy people. They never lack for nothing. And so many people believe that money is the root of all evil, as we mentioned, as well as anything related to it, like business and investment. Well, this leads to beliefs. Uh, this leads to like weird beliefs, uh, such as you can't have lots of money and be spiritual. You don't, you have to be poor to be glorified. Rich people are greedy, etc. So when you, so th th this is what happens. And these create negative thoughts and programs around money because uh, our subconscious seeks to avoid the pain of having money and how this makes you feel. So the better way to put it is the love of money is the root of all evil. So the lust of money is where it's the true meaning. Or Jesus put it in another way. He said, it's easier for a camel to enter the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So he wasn't trashing on rich people. What he was, what he was pretty much saying was that because the, the trouble is they're so attached to their money, they've made it their God. So there's no way that they can enter the kingdom of heaven. So meaning lusting after money, accumulating it for its sake, own sake, without desiring to fulfill a meaningful purpose or legacy. <clears throat> Saatchi, growing up in a Catholic household, it was known that priests make a vow of poverty. Now you see, they got that very wrong because what was the original blueprint was that the, the healers and the activators would help the business people to accumulate lots of good, great wealth. And then in return, the priests and the, the priests and the spiritual people get provided for as they help the business people to, to manifest their money. So yeah, that, I mean, the poverty is not holy. I mean, the, I mean, whenever you read the Bible, none of the, none of the great men and women of God were, were in poverty. They were all very wealthy people and never lacked for anything. Because I mean, it, it because it's only a problem when it's focused on personal gain or profit, even if it means swindling people, moving outside the principles of fair exchange to win and lose. So that's when it's bad. When you destroy people's lives or the environment to make a quick dollar. Because the Bible, in fact, teaches abundance that being wealthy and not living in lack all through the Old and New Testament, it's everywhere. And there are universal laws around money too. Now, how are they created? Picking up parents' or ancestors' beliefs around money, such as we can't afford it, you need to work hard to earn money. Facing money and competing with other people to be better and have more money than them rather than live your path and purpose. Making money solely for personal gain and not for the good of humanity. Swindling and extorting someone else in business, investments, trading, etc. Failures in business or investments. The mass consciousness can too create them if you're not actively deflecting it and doing regular clearing work. Not being truthful with your clients. You know, you promise them something and you don't fulfill it. Listening to the dark masters and going by their program rather than the light masters. Major attachment, fear and anxiety around money. Having little to no faith, trusting source to provide for you or God. Using money over your path. Hesitation and not taking enough risks in businesses, investments, trading, etc. So how do they affect you more? You'll have many challenges making money and abundance. Unless you clear your money karma around your parents, ancestors, and past lives, you'll be living and believing in their patterns forever and ever. And if you choose money over your path, I mean, sure, you'll have a lot of money, but you'll lack substance and real meaning in your life.
You'll be attached to and have lots of fear around money. But you will never be able to let it go. You won't be able to live your path and purpose due to a lack of money. So you will, will constantly be living short of your absolute best. Living your life, your part, life path and purpose won't be possible. You'll manifest a whole bunch of nothing or in other cases make money, but then get screwed over like swindled by someone, lose everything in an investment, etc. You'll constantly attract the same negative money experiences and never prosper. Since you have money imprints from past lives as well, they will karmically haunt you. And due to the imprints being stored in your DNA, now consciousness and thoughts, they will continue to manifest into the physical world until they're cleared. Okay, so does anyone have any questions before we get into the clearing? Yep, Suzanne, no. Okay, so no questions. Well, okay, let's get into the clearing. So I'll just turn my camera off while we do that. So everyone just focus on the code and inhale it into your aura and into your chakras and just imagine it there and close your eyes and really feel it. And just start taking deep breaths, relaxing your mind. Now call upon the divine protection and the bright white pyramid surrounding me and each person here. We call upon the five archangels, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael, Michael, and Metatron and Christ and mother Gaia. Only those who align with the word of God and the Christ consciousness. And we clear and repel any false spirit guides, negative energies, outside interferences, or anything else related. Now, It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that this clearing code be used to clear any blockages from each person here around finances as well as imprints. So we, we now clear any blockages stopping them from making the money that they desire. And we also clear any lust for money and turning away from the path and help them to regain their purpose and who they are and to add real meaning to their life. Now, to Asia in today. <sighs> We clear any self-sabotage from each person here as well and any fears and anxieties around money and negative programming from their parents and other influences around their life. Help them to unlearn that. And we also provide a third of the escort to escort any discardants around finances to the astral planes justly earned now. Contain any that resist and transport them to the astral planes justly earned now.
we now pour in the golden liquid light and send in the love from the Father and the higher councils. And we bring each person here back to balance financially and bring them back to calmness, peace, serenity, centeredness, happiness, joy, and strengthen them around finances and get and and bring and help them to gain the knowledge of Proverbs with, with the money and with clearing the blockages. We clear any occupants or ids created for money, bring back the golden soul fragments. Okay, so how is everyone feeling after that clearing? Margaret, more relaxed. Awesome, Margaret. Yeah, you certainly do get more relaxed because money can make you very tense. Linda, relaxed, sleepy. And Christine, I feel very calm and relaxed. Melanie, lighter and peaceful. Yeah, that, that did feel like a calming and relaxing clearing. It was quite nice, even though there was quite a few things being removed. Sachi, so I have a clear past life memory of being a nun or priest more than once. I feel peaceful and hopeful. I felt the golden liquid light gently move through my body. Yeah, wow, that's awesome, Sachi. Yes, yeah, I mean, you were, you were very filled with the golden liquid light and you were really taking it. It was great. Okay, so now everyone just take a glass of water just to integrate that. Okay, so is there any final question before we end for today? Suzanne, at the beginning of the session, I heard the words ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. I still feel great and relaxed. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like those ka-chings were the money imprints and blocks you were going to get cleared then, Suzanne. <laughs> Christine, that was great. Thanks, William. No questions for me. Yeah, thanks, Christine. Yep, thanks, Marjorette. Linda, thanks, William. Suzanne, love the sound of money chinging down. Yeah, so do I. It sounds pretty cool. Melanie, th no questions, but thanks, William. Right, no questions. All right, well, thank you, everyone. And this was another great session. Uh, I mean, I thought today I would be on the.
this webinar and the last and the previous one that I'll just do on around finances, because as you'd imagine, the world does need it right now. So I thought I would give you a nice treat there. So thank you. And I'll see you tomorrow on the next webinar. Bye for now.